Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Lost in the Dark Podcast. I am your host, Burton, a.k.a. B, a.k.a. The Wrathchild. We are fucking here. We are solo tonight. Um, First off, a little housekeeping. I think this is episode 63, I want to say. Uh, and this will be the first episode in a week last week. So the last episode we had was the uh, the annual 420 special. We impressed and had a great time recording that on 420. Um, but if you could tell in that episode, if you listened to it, I was, uh, I was a little under the weather. Uh, I was a little, uh, I was a little sick last week, uh, on, on that Saturday and, uh, and at the beginning part of last week. So I was a little bit, uh, slow moving, didn't really get a whole lot of podcasting done. And then, uh, and then the fucking, and then, you know, when it rains, it pours, right? And then the fucking car died. The, uh, my little... My little fucking, I had a Saturn view, and uh, I called it my Punisher van because I blacked it all out, even though it wasn't a van. And uh, but yeah, sadly it is, uh, it is no longer with us, so we had to deal with that a little bit. But hey, uh, the show must go the fuck on, relentless and reckless forever. Shout out to Children of Bodom. Um, so yeah, that's what's that's what's been going on. There's been a couple, couple, couple of little, you know, a couple little bumps in the road, but that's okay. We keep moving and uh, gotta keep the, uh, as Jamie Johnson says, the positive mental attitude, the PMA. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to uh, just kind of get everybody caught up. I, I was a little slow, like they, you know, I was a little slow getting these out. I haven't gotten one out in a week, and I felt bad. So, uh, but this week we're gonna have at least one solo episode. Hopefully, I'll get Aaron over here, and we're definitely gonna have the second in our new special series, the heavy metal folklore episodes. This week we'll be focusing on the Black Dahlia murder. Um, really excited about that one. That'll be that'll be a lot of fun for sure. So, uh, so yeah, let's just, uh, from there, let's just get into it. So, you know, uh, yeah, I was a little sick and then the car broke down, but then the week got better because Avengers Endgame was released. Um, you know, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to give a review. This is not going to be a review. Uh, I don't feel qualified to to review this movie uh at all honestly it's too big uh i'll give it a rating i'll give it my five out of five goat heads without hesitation um absolutely you know this is this is something that's never been done before um you know we've had uh ever since the great um uh who was it? i think it was josh josh whedon that that started Buffy, and uh, introduced introduced television audiences to the idea of the big bad, the uh, long uh, story arc, the long multi episode story arc centering around uh, you know just one one through story, and it was those seasons of Doctor Who that I loved the most when they had the one through story, and things like that. Uh, it, this is the first time that, that sort of thing has really ever been. This is the first time that sort of thing has ever been done on this level, certainly. Um, and you know they've they've done smaller versions of it in movies before, but never anything like this. Uh, you know, spanning you know eleven years, twenty two movies. Uh, you know, and and uh, in a roster of characters. Whose all their individual stories are interwoven, you know, and uh, they do such a an amazing fucking job with with balance in these films. I remember the first time I saw Avengers, I was like, "How are you gonna have this many heroes in the movie and have it feel like give any of them enough screen time?" Essentially, like whose movie is it really gonna be, or is it really gonna are they really gonna be able to pull off? balance of it being all their movies and they did it uh, seamlessly in that first Avengers and I think they've continued to be able to pull that off since and I re- yeah, I also remember after the first Avengers movie being like you know that they're never gonna be able to top that and then they just keep on topping it and and uh but now more than ever I feel like 
they're never going to be able to top that in reference to Endgame. Uh, I remember the first time, I remember one time uh, my dad, my grandpa, and I were up at our cabin in northern Michigan. And we, uh, my dad and I showed my grandfather the movie The Matrix for the first time. So this would have been in the very early 2000s. And after the movie was over, my, I'll never forget this. My grandpa stood up. And he goes, I need to go lie down and think about what I just saw. And I'll never forget that reaction because that was that was a movie, you know, it was, it was a movie that, that the whole idea of The Matrix is essentially like a philosophical, you know, uh, ex- mind experiment, you know, something to play with in your mind. Like what if all of this is. A, com- a simulation of some kind, you know what I mean? Um, and now it's even entered into, you know, theoretical, theoretical physics and stuff like that. Uh, that, four, okay, four different reasons, obviously. But that is how I felt after I watched Endgame. Like, I walked out of it out of it with my buddy Jordan and I w- immediately wanted to start talking about it but then lost all words cuz I didn't even know where to start you know it's so big and so massive and so many things happen and have to happen to make other things happen that it's like you don't even you don't even really know where the fuck to start with it like it's so fucking vast and you know yeah it's just that big it's just that I I literally walked out of it and have been saying ever since I've never seen anything like that and I've seen every single one of these fucking Marvel movies and the TV shows except well the Netflix shows at least uh and, and yeah, it's 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 really is just that fucking uh that much more than all of the other ones have ever been. It's so big and so massive and so awesome. Uh you know, it's the best one for sure by far. Like it definitely I liked it way more than Infinity War. Um yeah, and it was, you know, it's brilliantly done in the sense that they could stop making Marvel movies at Endgame, and it's I'm perfectly fine with the ending. Like, ultimately, this has been the arc. This is, you know, the story the whole time, and that's the Infinity Stone story has come to an end. And that was the main arc, and that that's you know that's what they gave it a concise ending and a beautiful one you know it ended exactly how i wanted it to end really um yeah yeah it was it was it really was something else like i see i've seen it twice now i've seen it twice now because i had to go see it with my little sister my little sister and i see all these together and but she was out of town with my other sister actually they were on a little vacation uh, out of town when this came out so i went and saw it with jordan the first time and my sister the second yeah we both times it was a blast um if you haven't seen avengers endgame yet my god go see that shit you will not regret it greatest battle sequence i've ever seen in my life and yeah it 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 really is something else it really is for them to have taken us on a ride like this and to come this far it really is something special and it's a special moment and it deserves every bit of accolades that it gets 100 percent, 100 percent. this is a feat that may never again be matched i mean honestly we may, it may it, you know when did when did a new hope come out and that was just one movie but when did that come out like in the 70s so it may take another 40 50 years to uh to get to the point where we ever have anything like this this massive again 
on this sort of scale. Absolutely outstanding, wonderful ending to the saga. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously excited. You know, I'll always be excited for what they have next. Uh, I want to see the X-Men and I want to see all that. But I want to see the next Spider-Man. You know, I love Spider-Man. But this was a brilliant fucking ending. And uh, hats off to them. Uh, you know they've never they've never done us wrong so good for them and good for us we are we are lucky to have uh been living in this golden age of cinema really um like i've said many times a lot of people don't remember this but uh you know when the dark knight came out and when right before iron man came out movie theaters across the country were closing like so were video stores Streaming was murdering that stuff on a level unprecedented at that point in time. And uh, until people started going to the movies again for these Marvel movies, you know, places, movie movie ticket sales were at like an all-time low. So these Marvel movies really uh, changed the game in, in a big, bad way. And... Uh, yeah, I think we're. I think I, I I consider myself very lucky to uh, to be able to see it come full circle. From going from being a kid getting made fun of and shit on for fucking liking this shit to seeing it come full circle now is uh, yeah, it's wonderful. And uh, yeah, I'm just you know I think it's great, and I fucking love to see the heroes that I loved as a kid get the, this kind of treatment and everything. So, yeah, if you haven't seen, I'm, and I know I'll talk about it more with, uh, with Aaron once he gets here and stuff like that, but if you haven't seen Endgame, God, go see it. Like, it's so fucking awesome. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Some of the most metal moments I've ever seen. Spoiler warning, when Captain wields Mjolnir, it is... It is beautiful. It is a beautiful sight. All right. All right. So for now, you know, I still, I'm like I said, like when I finished watching those movies, even both times, like it's a lot to digest and I still don't feel like I'm done like sifting through it all in my mind. So it's hard to just like off the cuff come up with things to say about it right now, uh, especially without somebody else here to bounce things off of. Uh, but... It, it's it, it to me it is everything that movies are supposed to be it's massive on a level that's hard to imagine it's uh storytelling at its highest level and uh you know it was a show it was a genuine show like i left that movie for the first time feeling like i just left a metal concert I'm dead serious. Like besides, you know, my neck hurting and stuff like that, it my head was buzzing. Like I felt like it should have been a thirty dollar ticket that I paid for what I just saw, because it was like that much for the money. You know what I mean? Like it's bigger than any other movie. So it's just it's it's a show. You want to when you go out, when you pay money for a fucking ticket for something, you want to go out to see a show. And god damn it, they delivered one in this. It uh, like unlike any other. Unlike any other. So uh so yeah, I, I know I'll talk about it more. Everybody's going to be talking about this movie forever. Um genius it was just that's all i can say about it is just i i thought every bit of it was just you know i'm but then again i'm not a fucking if i can go in and it can act, like really make me feel something like i'm in the bag for things that make me genuinely feel something you know that's why i love metal so much is because of the way that it makes me feel so anything that can make me feel something then i and i like it then i'm just in the bag for it and these movies do that to the 10th degree especially this one uh yeah you just feel like a kid again it's magic it's movie magic and that's such a wonderful special thing to me 
I love the movies. Um, but yeah, so here's uh, here's our drink for the night. I'm having a shot of Jägermeister to the Jäger gods and to Avengers. Cheers, all of you. Alrighty then. Jaeger is the blood of the gods, as we know. So I came across an article today. And I was going to grab it to talk about it on the show. I don't know. I'm now am blah, 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 blah. I thought I was going to talk about it for one reason, but I'm actually going to talk about it for a different reason. The title off Blabbermouth is Heavy Metal is Fastest Growing Genre, according to digital music distribution company TuneCore. According to their numbers, in 2018, the fastest growing genres worldwide were heavy metal with a 154%. Increase. The second place was J-pop. I don't even know what that is. 133% increase. R&B and soul, 68% increase. K-pop, 58% increase. So on and so forth. Uh, but what's interesting? When I that then that's cool. That's so you know. That's and that's this isn't the first time we've talked about. Uh, I, and I don't know what TuneCore is. It says music distribution company. So whatever that is, but we've also talked about streaming services that have reported things like heavy metal listeners are more loyal, like they will go back and listen to, you know, the songs and albums that they love again and again uh, on these streaming services, whereas other people, you know, they'll listen to a single or two for a week and and be done with it, you know, again, to quote the great Rob Zombie in the movie Metal Headbangers Journey, you know, I've met the guy that is Slayer carved into his chest, I've never met the guy that was into Slayer one summer, you know, that, and that's, that's what being a metalhead is, you know, it's not, it's not something you ever grow out of, you know what I mean, it's fucking, you know, it, it, it's, you're in it and once you once you feel it once it grabs you once it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck and you and once you live enough to know how special that is and how rare that is and how few things in life you'll find like that then uh you never let it go you know so we we stay you know it, it, it we stay true and that's why we appreciate bands like uh, at least me personally, uh, and I didn't. You know what? Not even me personally, because that it speaks to the sales and the tours. Uh, that's why we appreciate, love, and su- continue to support bands like Slayer, like Hatebreed, uh, these bands that uh, never bend, never break, and never change. And Cannibal Corpse, and they just they continue to. Give you know do do they they're not they do what they do they're not bending to the will of a record company or anybody else trying to make their music more accessible to you know a larger scale audience they uh, they have core fans and a massive fan base of core fans and I'm not saying don't get new mem don't find ways to bring in new audience members of course not of course not. But they don't start using clean vocals. They don't start writing ballads. They don't start doing things like that to get into the the lane of mainstream radio terrestrial music. They they're not they're not purposely maneuvering to get into that one specific lane that is structured and meticulously designed to anticipate and and not just anticipate but influence the the wants of the overall mass money spending masses okay that's what that lane is that that's the type who that lane is for and metalheads are the ones who reject that lane we recognize what it is, we see it for what it is, and we do not accept it. We do not like it. So the ones who, the bands who stay out of that lane and stay true to where to to their fan base and to uh, uh, the heavy metal community and everything, those are the ones that have the the Slayer, the Hatebreed, the Cannibal Corpse type careers. Um. 
as examples. So, you know, it just speaks to uh, the heavy metal fan loyalty and why we are a different fan base than any other. But upon in reading this article here, I found something else. So TuneCore, has it, if, you, if you've heard of this, write to me because I've not. This is the first time I've heard of this and I don't fully understand what it is. But check this out. TuneCore, the global platform for independent musicians to build audiences and careers, today announced that, that its artists earned $83 million in the first quarter of 2019, a 21% increase over quarter one in 2018. And then they talk about some other numbers. In addition to distribution, income, publishing, administration, royalties collected for TuneCore, artists grew 42% in 2018. As well, YouTube monetization delivered significant new income for artists, growing 48% over 2017. TuneCore is the only global platform that pays artists 100% of what they earn from digital streams and downloads, while also meeting all of their needs across distribution, promotion, and publishing administration. Uh, said Scott Aikerman, CEO of TuneCore. In 2019, we're seeing great momentum in helping our customers build sustainable careers by finding new income across formats and channels. The platform enables artists to distribute their music to over 150 digital stores and streaming services worldwide, including iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, Deezer, and Google Play. The reach helped make TuneCore independent artists a major factor influencing the growth of genres markets and geographics so i've never heard of this tune core but it sounds like if you're in a fucking band you need to be checking out what the fuck this tune core is because i tell you what anyone that's off you know even the even if it is somehow backdoor bullshit anyone that is is is, is seems to be trying to put the artists first uh that's giant that's giant Look, anywhere that there is a need for something that no one else is doing, and the first person that does it will always be successful. And there are thousands, tens of thousands of bands out there that are very talented, that are unsigned, and they are getting fucked by all these big streaming companies and all the... the, 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 the the only place, it seems like the only place for a band to make a real name for themselves anymore is on, like, YouTube or some shit, as opposed to actually playing local shows, because nowadays, if you want to play local shows, nine times out of ten, you have to pay to do it. All those bands you go see, see it playing at local fucking shows, buy their goddamn t-shirts, for Christ's sake, because they had to pay money to play that show for you. They're not getting paid for it. Nine times out of ten. And that's fucking horrible. Like, there was a point in time where you a band could make a decent living just being a band. Playing three, four gigs a night. A night during the week. You know? Like, that was a, very, that was a thing. That's how Twisted Sister did it. Like, that's how a lot of fucking bands did it back in the day. But that now it's all pay to play. You have to sell X amount of tickets. You have to do this. You have to do that. And we get X amount from your t-shirt sales because we're the venue. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, you, you, you're, you're taking money from a bunch of broke kids that just want to play fucking music. It's ridiculous. Um, so, anywhere where there's a need that no one else is filling... The one that steps in to do it, and if they do it legitimately, they will reap the benefits. So the first company, and if maybe this tune core is it, but the first company that comes out and is like, hey, we got you covered. We'll take care of you. Don't worry. We'll make our money off of advertising on the site on the back end or some shit. Don't worry about that. But we want to prop you up. We want to make sure you're actually getting money for your art. So that gives you more freedom to be able to pursue what you want to do with this art. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think I think anyone who starts a company that does what it sounds like TuneCore is doing, 
you know, provided they're doing it legitimately. I think that's huge. That that's a that's a big splash in the water in uh in the industry, especially for um small local heavy metal bands because you know, I'm doing that, you know, for example, this podcast, like it's unbelievably difficult. I have no idea marketing, you know, I have no idea how to get the word out. I'm naked. I, I do what I can on, on social media. Please, for the love of God, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, in, in fairness, though, I try to be as active as human. Like, I really try to post every single day. You know, I try to reach out and be as active as possible. So, um,. If anyone ever wants to write in anything, please, for the love of God, if you ever have a, if you have a dog man story, ghost story, any paranormal experience at all, I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you've ever, check out our Throwback Thursdays. If you've ever been to any of the shows that we have been to, uh, let us know. Uh, if you're ever going to any of the shows we're going to, let us know. Next one coming up is this Saturday in Flint, Michigan, the Metal Church and the the uh, Doro of Warlock show. Uh, at the Machine Shop in Flint. We are very excited. And then, so of course, May 19th. Oh, my God. Is, is the One of the only things that is going to beat Avengers Endgame this year is that Slayer show. <laughs> so, unbelievably excited. So, yeah, you know, just, just to let you know, if there's ever anything you want to reach out to us for, please do. And I understand how hard it is trying to get the word out about what you're doing. But... That kind of leads me to my next topic and final topic for the night. Uh, relentlessness. The one, there is no right or wrong, well, there are probably wrong ways, but there's no right way to do something like a podcast or a band or, you know what I mean? There's no book that you can get that lays out the five-year plan and it's all going to work. That doesn't exist. Everyone has a different path. However, the one thing I've noticed, the only commonality between all the bands and everything else, anyone who is a master at their skill, is relentlessness. The ones who are obsessed with it and obsessed with their craft and just are constantly thinking of ways to improve are basically constantly thinking about it and i can i I can tell you right from experience that this podcast is i think about it every single day i'm doing something in relation to it every single day i'm obsessed with it i'm obsessed and i love doing it um a new uh well all a rekindled Obsession, and this is uh, another thing I've talked about before. Um, part of me starting this podcast and kind of getting, yeah, you know, like I said, I've always been a metalhead, absolutely always. But when if you go back and listen to the early episodes of this podcast, there was a lot of shit I was discovering at that point in time because I had like stopped looking for new things for a few years. I had like stopped. I had like gotten to a point and I just stopped and I stayed there for like a few years. And then like I felt like bad and stuck and 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 just not good about it. Um and you know, it's the the wise words from the great film, if you've never seen it, Jeff Daniels, Escanaba in the Moonlight. If you've never seen that movie, it's one of my favorite movies of all time because if you want to understand what it feels like to be in Michigan, watch that movie. Because that movie feels like Michigan. Um, but one of my favorite lines in that film is, uh, if you don't know where to start, go back to the beginning. So that's what I did. Like, I didn't know. I was just at a point where I was stuck. I didn't know where to start, and I didn't know why. And so I just went back to the beginning. And where my beginning was is metal. It's always been metal. So I just went back, and I started rediscovering everything. I busted out and organized my my CD collection. I fucking expanded it by hundreds. Literally, I bought probably over... over I probably bought over 200 CDs in this past year. Because I just got obsessed. I got fucking obsessed with the music again. We started the podcast. Essentially, this podcast 
is a my love letter to heavy metal. Like it, it's fucking. I I got obsessed with it, and um, again, and still am, and uh, and then and it's crazy. Like it, it just like flip flipped back on in my brain. It was like for some reason somehow unintentionally it had gotten shut off and then it switched back on. And that just happened again, literally last week or two weeks ago. I don't know. Um, and almost in the same pattern, you get obsessed with the music and then you start to want to play it. And, uh, I, I'd been playing, I got this shitty little keyboard here that I, I kind of, I've been, I was toying with for a while and I was like, well, son of a bitch, I still have guitars. And so, I busted out my old guitar and I swear every single night my fingers have been hurt. I've been playing it for an hour a day every day since this clicked. And I've been been able to hear songs differently, having different understanding of the musical structure by 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 playing again. My wrist, you know, my fingers and wrists are just now starting to get back a little a little bit of speed again. Um I used to be able to play a lot of fucking shit, some children about them even. And, uh, but yeah, all, a lot of it went away. I can still play some stuff, but I'm, st- I'm relearning. I'm getting back into it. I'm relearning it. Um, and it's extremely exciting and I'm loving it. Uh, absolutely loving it. I actually ordered the, a new amp because my, I lost this. See, that's part of the reason why I stopped playing is many, many years ago, my amp broke and I never, like back then, I never had money to buy any new equipment. So that was another thing is like, I didn't have a great guitar. I didn't have a great amp. The amp went and that was pretty much it. Like I never had money to replace anything. So I, uh, kind of just gave up on it. Uh, but now it's just like rekindled again. And, uh, you know, it's just relentless obsession with things. So we're borderline unhealthy, relentless obsession with things. But at the same time, as long as you hold on to that and as long as you keep pushing, you'll get better. You'll get good. You know what I mean? Whatever it is your craft is, whether it be podcasting, whether it be an instrument of piano or guitar, whether it be uh, pursuit of a job or or a job, whatever job it is you're doing, you know what I mean? Like what? Uh, schoolwork, you know, uh, YouTube videos, video games, even like there's anything, any craft that you may be doing, you know, of any kind. Uh, if you love it, get obsessed with it. Let yourself have that obsession and just dive into it. Learn everything you can about it. And, and yeah, like that's, it seems to be an ingredient in the recipe for success it seems to be one of as far as i can tell in all the documentaries i've seen all the interviews i've watched every all the different things that is the only thing i see almost all of them have in common is this borderline unhealthy obsession with the craft um and yeah, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about that tonight. I, it's been on my mind, um, and it's something that I've been experiencing, you know, for, for, for a while now, uh, and I love it. Like it, it really keeps you moving, you know what I mean? And you never like the funny thing is before I, a week or two ago when I picked the guitar back up, I, w- I had literally recently been thinking like, I, I'm, you know, don't get me wrong. Definitely got the podcast, but the podcast has, is, 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 is getting to a point where, um, it's, uh, I, I, I feel as though relearning an instrument may even help me on the podcast. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to figure out other ways to get better at this. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, I think it's just, you know, it's a matter of mastering crafts and things like that. So, uh, whatever it is that you do, or whatever it is that you love, whatever makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck, pursue that. 
Get obsessed with it. Learn everything you can. Who knows? Maybe you'll get obsessed with it, learn everything you can, and step back and go, hmm, well, the more I found out about that, the less I liked it. And then, okay, you move on to the next. Like I would say, like, before I got back into the guitar, I was kind of like, I'm not, like, yeah, I got the podcast, but I feel like I need more now. I want to do, like, it's not that this was boring or not enough or anything like that. I just wanted something more to keep things moving. I felt like I was spending too much time not doing something. Uh, I was like, I want to fill this time with doing something. And so I started fucking around with that piano and just, I was, you know what? Let's play this music. Let's start learning how to play music again. So, uh, so yeah. It's just something that, that, that relentlessness, relentlessness has been on my mind a lot. Uh, yeah, it seems to be, it just seems to be one of, one of the important ingredients. And I don't know... It's certainly not the only ingredient, and it's certainly not. Everyone who's been successful has not been relentlessly obsessed with their craft. That is certainly not the case. Um, but, yeah, it's all, it's also like a, a longing to learn, I think. I think, you know, you get bored. You know, once you get bored and you're not like, yeah, it's just, just that born of boredom. Born of boredom. That's pretty good. Uh, born of boredom. Like so much of it is born of boredom, and when you get bored enough, man, it just—that's my least favorite thing. Probably is sitting there being. But one of my favorite, least favorite things, is when I'm genuinely, genuinely bored. Like I fucking doesn't. What else drives you that crazy? Is real deep boredom. I know it's like a first world problem, but. Seriously, like, and when it's not even, like, on you, it's not your fault. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, but these relentless obsessions snap, like, get me out of that every time I almost go into it. So, you know, it's just, it's it helps. It definitely, definitely helps. Um, yeah. Filling, filling the time with, uh, as opposed to, uh, filling the time as opposed to letting it go by, certainly. So yeah, I guess I'm going to wrap this up. I just wanted to talk a little bit about Avengers, a little bit about relentlessness because it's been on my mind. Let me know, write to me yeah, how you feel about that. If you agree or if you think I'm a fucking moron, um, let me know. Uh, but do you get obsessed with things? Do you like have an obsessive personality kind of like not you know what I mean like just one but in a healthy way you know what I mean uh you know obsessed with things like art um of any kind you know animals I fucking love animals I love raising my dragon uh I have a Philippine sail fin dragon if you don't know what that is look it up and be ready to be amazed there are living dinosaurs on this earth and they are beautiful um I'll say it again. Philippine sailfin dragon. Check it out. I'm serious. Uh, love it. I love animals though. Um, and yeah, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is that you love and, uh, you know, don't be afraid to get obsessed with it and, uh, really take it to the limit. See what you can do with it. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think that's what, uh, it's a good way to live life. I think in a lot of ways. So, uh, but yeah, that's about it. That's about it. I'm going to wrap it up. If you uh, have anything, like I said before, paranormal experiences, if you want to let us know anything, please like, follow, and uh, check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, and write to us if you want at Lost in the Dark Podcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it from me uh, for today. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I hope you have a great rest rest of the week. I will be back again uh, tomorrow or Thursday with the second episode in our heavy metal folklore epi- uh, series, special series, focusing this time. The last time we focused on the Lake Wodo mur- murders, this time we'll be focusing on the Black Dahlia murder. Very excited. I hope you are too. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for me tonight. 
Um, yeah, I love you all. Thank you so much for getting lost with me tonight. I absolutely love you all to death. Good night. <laughs>